A letter from Benjamin Banneker to Thomas Jefferson, dated 19th August, 1791. I am fully sensible of the greatness of that freedom which I take with you on the present occasion, a liberty which seemed to me scarcely allowable when I reflected upon that distinguished and dignified station in which you stand, and the almost general pre prejudice and pre preposition which is so prevalent in the world against those of my complexion. I suppose it is a truth too well attested to you to need a proof here that we are a race of beings who have long labored under the abuse and censure of the world, that we have long been looked upon with an eye of contempt, and that we have long been considered rather as brutish than human, and scarcely capable of mental endowments. Sir, I hope I may safely admit in the consequence of that report which hath reached me, that you are a man far less inflexible in sentiments of this nature than many others, that you are measurably friendly and well disposed towards us, and that you are willing and ready to lend your aid and assistance to our relief from those many distresses and numerous calamities to which we are reduced. Now, sir, if this be founded in truth, I apprehend you will readily embrace every opportunity to eradicate that train of absurd and false ideas and opinions which so generally prevails with respect to us, and that your sentiments, while are concurrent with mine, which are that one universal Father hath given being to us all, and that he hath not only made us all of one flesh, but he hath also without partiality afforded us all the same sensations, and endued us all with the same faculties, and that however variable we may be in society or religion, however diversified in situation or color, we are all of the same family, and stand in the same relation to him. Sir, if these are sentiments of which you are fully persuaded, I hope you cannot but acknowledge that it is the indispensable duty of those who maintain for themselves the rights of human nature and who profess the obligations of Christianity to extend their power and influence to the relief of every part of the human race from whatever burden or oppression they may just unjustly labor under, and this I apprehend a full conviction of the truth and obligation of these principles should all lead us to. Sir, I have long been convinced that if your love for yourselves and for those inestimable laws which preserve to you the rights of human nature was founded on sincerity, you could not but be solicitous that every individual whatso of whatsoever rank or distinction might with you equally enjoy the blessings thereof. Neither could you rest satisfied short of the most active diffusion of your exertions in order to... Uh, in order to their promotion from any state of degradation to which the unjustifiable cruelty and barbarism of men have reduced them. Sir, I freely and cheerfully acknowledge that I am of the African race, and in that color which is natural to them of the deepest dye, and it is under a sense of the most profound gratitude to the supreme ruler of the universe that I now confess to you that I am not under the state of tyrannical thraldom and inhuman captivity to which many to which too many of my brethren are doomed, but that I have abundantly tasted of the fruition of those blessings which proceed from the free and unequaled liberty with which you are favored, and which I hope you will willingly allow you have received from the immediate hand of that being, from whom proceedeth every good and perfect gift. Sir, suffer me to recall to your mind that time in which the arms and tyranny of the British crown were exerted with every powerful effort in order to reduce you to a state of servitude. Look back, I entreat you, on the variety of dangers to which you were exposed. Reflect on that time to, in which every human aid appeared unavailable, and in which every even hope and fortitude wore the aspect of inability to the conflict. And you cannot but, lead, be, cannot but be led to a serious, grateful sense of your miraculous and providential preservation. You cannot but acknowledge that the present freedom and tranquility which which you enjoy, you have mercifully received, and that it is the peculiar blessing of heaven. This, sir, was a time in which you clearly saw into the injustice of a state of slavery, in which you had just apprehensions of the horrors of its condition. It was now, sir, that your abhorrence thereof was so excited that you publicly held forth this true and invaluable doctrine, which is worthy to be recorded and remembered in all succeeding ages. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
Here, sir, was a time in which your tender feelings for yourselves had engaged you thus to declare. You were then impressed with proper ideas of the great valuation of liberty and the free possession of those blessings to which you were entitled by nature. But, sir, how pitiable is it to reflect that although you were so fully convinced of the benevolence of the Father of mankind, and of his equal and impartial distribution of those rights and privileges which he had conferred upon them, that you should at the same time counteract his mercies, in detaining by fraud and violence so numerous a part of my brethren under groaning captivity and cruel oppression, that you should at the same time be found guilty of the most criminal act, which you professedly detested in others, with with respect to yourselves. Sir, I suppose that your knowledge of the situation of my brethren is too extensive to need a recital here. Neither shall I presume to prescribe methods by which they may be relieved, otherwise than by recommending to you and all others to wean yourselves from these narrow prejudices in which you have imbibed with respect to them, and as Job proposed to his friends, put your souls in their soul stead. Thus shall your hearts be enlarged with kindness and benevolence toward them, and thus shall you need neither the direction of myself or others in what manner to proceed herein. And now, sir, although my sympathy and affection for my brother hath caused my enlargement thus far, I ardently hope that your candor and generosity will plead with you in my behalf, when I make known to you that it was not originally my design, but having taken up my pen in order to direct to you as a present a copy of an almanac which I have calculated for the succeeding year, I was unexpectedly and unavoidably led thereto. This calculation, sir, is the product of my arduous study in this, in this my advanced stage of life, for having long had unbounded desires to become acquainted with the secrets of nature, I have had to gratify my curiosity herein through my own assiduous application to astronomical study, in which I need not to recount to you the many difficulties and disadvantages which I have had to encounter. And although I had almost declined to make my calculation for the ensuing year in a consequence of that time which I had allotted, therefore, being taken up at the federal territory by the request of Mr. Andrew Ellicott, yet finding myself under several engagements to printers of this state to whom I had communicated my design, on my return to my place of residence, I industriously applied myself thereto, which I hope to I have accomplished with correctness and accuracy, a copy of which I have taken taken the liberty to direct to you, and which I humbly request you will favorably receive. And although you may have the opportunity of perusing it after its publication, yet I chose to send it to you in manuscript previous thereto, that thereby you might not only have an earlier inspection, but that you might also view it in my own handwriting. And now, sir, I shall conclude and subscribe myself with the utmost profound respect, your most obedient humble servant, Benjamin Banneker.